Good morning, grade nines. Today we're going to do lesson 7.3, and this is on what's called similar polygons. So we're going to start with just drawing some reductions and some enlargements, and then we're going to show you how to prove that they're similar. And then after that, we're going to move on to using those properties to solve some property, some uh, problems. So I want you to take your your notes here, and I want you'll you'll see A, B, C, D. This is a quadrilateral, and what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to draw it onto this grid right here. All right, so that it matches perfectly. Now the grids are all the same size. This is just a shrink version of this. But I want you to take this and I want you to put it onto that in exactly the right spot. So for example, what I'm talking about is if you take a look at A, it's over one and one, two, three, four down. So over one, one, two, three, four down. There's A. B is two and one, so two and one. There's my B. And I'd like you to continue until you've got it all drawn there. And uh, then you so pause the recording and do that now. All right, so C is just uh, one, two, three, four, five down. So one, two, three, four, five, there's C. And D is one, two, three, four, one, two. So one, two, three, four, one, two, there's that one. And if everything's correct, I should have one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five. So let's go check. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five. Now you'll notice when I'm when I'm counting here, I'm counting spaces, I'm not counting points. And the reason for that is very is is, is very important. All right. If I counted um, the distance from from say from here to there and I wanted to count um, just the points, I'd have like one, two, and three. So I'd be saying that's three. But you look right here, it's only going two. So don't count the, the, the intersections, count the spaces that are, that are there, all right? So now that I've got it drawn, what I want to do is I want to take and put the lines in. So I'll just grab this, and we'll put some lines in from there to there. Now, you can be probably more accurate than I am because I don't have such a control as you do with the ruler. Now I have to relabel everything. Now when you relabel, uh, it's important for you to understand that you're going to be doing the prime. So this is the original, and this is our reduction. So in order to show that this is a reduction in our labeling, what we do is we're going to call this A, and we put a prime mark there. And that shows that it's different from this, but it does match up. So this is the corresponding or matching point to A. So A and A prime are linked. For B, I'm going to put up a B prime. For C, it's going to be C prime. And for D, it's going to be D prime. So, because I've used the grids, and the grids are exact square, we know that these two actual figures are proportional. They are referred to as being similar. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to go down to the next page. And you're going to do the same thing, only this time it's going to be an enlargement. And then we're going to use this information. So, I want you to take and uh, do the enlargement, okay? So pause the recording and do that now. Okay, so taking a look down here, all right, the A was over one and down one, one, two, three, four. So there is our A, all right, over one and down one, two, three, four. B was over two, down one, over two, down one, there's my B. C is over 1 and down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Over 1 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And my other one here, D, is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 2. All right. And if I'm right, this should be 6 and then 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So I've got it correct. So now I'm going to put my lines in. I'm going to do the same thing I did here uh, with my, my, uh, my uh, letters. I'm going to put my prime marks in, but I've already used back here, I've used a single prime. So I want to be able to tell, I want to be able to tell the single prime diagram from the other diagrams. So I'm going to be using what's called a double prime here. You'll see what I mean by that in a second. Okay, so here's A. This is A and it's prime prime. All right. And this is B. And again, prime prime. C double prime, and D, double prime. So now, we've got everything set up. What I need you to do now is if you go down to your next page down here, you will notice there's a huge set of charts here, okay? 
Now what I'm going to want you to do is this is the lengths of the sides. And you notice I've got an AB and then I've got a A prime B prime. And I've got a AB and an A double prime B double prime. And now I've got the I've got the angles here. So what I need you to do is get your protractor and your ruler out. I need you to measure length A B. And of course you can just copy that down here because it's going to be the same length. But A prime B prime was uh, was our reduction, and A double prime B double prime was our enlargement. So these two numbers here are going to be different. So I'll help you out with A B. There's the first measurement. It is actually six, so that stays six. Right? And the angle, I'm going to put that in too, I'll help you out. That angle is 63.5. That makes that one 63.52. So I want you to pause the recording. It's going to take a bit. I want you to fill in all the rest of this information. I want to know what A prime B prime is, B C, B prime, C prime, C D, et cetera, et cetera, and all the angles. All right. So do that please right now. Pause the recording and do it. Okay, rather than going back and forth and back and forth, I'm just going to take and open these up and show you what the correct answers are. So take a moment, uh, pause the recording, and make sure that you've got everything correct. If you don't have everything correct, then please do correct it because we want to have numbers that match up. All right, so pause the recording and uh, double check your work. Okay, so now that I've got that done, if you look down a little bit further, you'll see that I'm setting up some ratios. I'm setting up AB over A prime B prime. So there's AB, 6, A prime, B prime is 4.6, right? and when you divide that out, you get 1.3. Right? Now it says here round your answer to the nearest tenth, so the second one would be BC and B prime, C prime, so BC is 3.2 and 2.4 for the primes, so there's 3.2, divide that out, you get 1.3. So, fill in the rest of this information, pause the recording, and fill this in, and then we'll double check it. All right, so here is your numbers, and here is your division answers, your quotients. Now, you'll notice something about this, obviously. When we do AB over A prime B prime, the ratios are all the same. And that is actually supposed to be true because we know when the ratios are the same on all the sides that that means that they have proportionality and they're similar. Now because this was the rejection and this was the enlargement here, the double primes, you'll notice that they're different than this one but they're also all the same. So this one here, this proves that everything's proportional also. Now when you take a look at the actual angles here, you should have noticed when you were doing the angles up here that angle A was 63.5, angle A 63.5, and angle A prime was 63.5, and A double prime was 63.5. So you'll notice that all the angles are the same here. They're all identical. And they're identical because we have a similarity or proportional objects here that are just an enlargement or a reduction. Now the key thing for you to understand is that enlargements and reductions, the angles are always the same. If you can find one angle which doesn't match the corresponding angle in the other figure, then it's not going to be proportional. Okay, so the side ratios we know are going to be related because we have all the same angles and we know that the ratios of each side to its matching side uh, forms the same ratio. So if you take a look here, these four ratios of AB original to A prime B prime and BC original to B prime C prime, all of these are all the same thing, right? And if you go to the enlargement, these ones here are also all the same. I believe these are 1.3 and these were 0.7, right? So if these things are all the same, you can take any time you have three of the four in one of these pairs, then you can find the unknown dimension. All right. It says here, are these two triangles similar? Note, to make them fit, I had to change the scale, but the measurements are correct, just to let you know, okay? So they're not perfect, but they are, the, the dimensions are. So when we take this and we want to find out whether or not this is actually uh, similar, we're going to have to set up a, a ratio, okay? Now, our ratio is going to be looking on the next page. Here's what it looks like, okay? I, it's a triangle, so A prime for AB and A prime B prime. BC and B prime C prime and CA C prime A prime. So if you look at what we just did down here, I know that AB and A prime B prime, these two match. So I can put them one over the other. 
A C and A C prime, A prime, C prime, they match. So I can make a ratio out of them. And B C and B prime, C prime, they will, uh, they match, they're corresponding. So I can make a relationship or a ratio out of those two. Now, if those two things are proportional, then each one of these three ratios of the original to its um, to the enlargement, these ratios should all be true. So I've got AB's length, which is 58.31, and A prime B prime, which is 75.55. Now I just took that information right off this here, right? 58.31, 75.55. So I've got that. Now this is going to be equal to this one here. I'll just take the, the length of BC and B prime C prime, and I'll put them down, and I'll also put down the third one. Now, what we know is, if these three are all equal, then we have proved that those triangles are similar or proportional. So to do this one, you'll see the three numbers here. 0 0.771806757718287718588. Now you'll notice something at the very end here, when we get up to the very, very bottom there at the at the end, these aren't the same. And that's because when I did the drawing, I told the computer to tell me this length, but I forced it to round these numbers off, right? And because I forced them to round them off, I've introduced a small bit of an error. And that small little bit of an error is what you see right here. But if you look closely, 7718, 7718, 7718. And they're very, very close to each other. In fact, when I rounded off the two decimal places, all three are equal. So are these triangular similar? Yes, they are. The ratios are the same. The difference is just from the measurement. Now, how would you know if they're not similar? Well, there would be one of these ratios would be significantly different, right? Now, if this was 0.77 and this was 0.76, that's not a rounding error from the measurement. That's actually the wrong ratio, right? Okay, one of the most common uses of things which are proportional or similar is when you take the two diagrams and you set up your ratios and you have one of those pieces missing. So we know that there's a four, there's basically two fractions equal to each other. So what I'm going to do here is I want to find out what is the value of x right here. You'll notice it's not given to me. So I'm going to have to set up a ratio. So I'm going to set up a ratio with my unknown x which is my x, y, x prime, y prime, over my x, y, right there. And I'm going to set up my y, z prime, y prime, over top of my z, y. All right. Now what I've done here is I put my, on the bottom, I've got my original, and on the top, I have my enlargement. They must always be on the same level, otherwise you've made a mistake somewhere. Now, just taking the numbers from x prime, y prime, which is right here, that's my x, and that matches up with 30. So it's going to be x over 30. This here, 104, is going to be over the 70. Now once you get to this step, this is where your algebra takes over and you should have no trouble. I want to get the x isolated. I want it by itself. I'm dividing by 30, so to get the, rid of the 30, I'm going to multiply both sides by 30. Now x over 30 times 30, we know that this here is going to cancel. And over here, you're going to have 104.31 divided by 70 times 30. Okay. Now, to do the math here, it's real straightforward. Remember, when we do bed mass, it's divide and multiply in the order they appear. So here's my divide. So you take 104.31 divided by 70. And don't cut your calculator. Just go times 30. And you'll get this number right here, 44.7042871. Now, when we're not told what to, um, to round it off to, we always go to, the, to two decimal places. So this is going to be 44.70. And that zero is needed because it says that we're accurate up to the, the hundredth place. OK, so I had this two pieces of information and a third piece of information. And because these were, were um, related as corresponding and these were corresponding, I could use this fraction and that fraction to find the x. Okay, 
Now it's going to be two steps here. We get x and y. So what I'd like you to do is you've got the relationship here. I'm going to help you out with the first part. I'm going to show you the first ratio for x. All right? Now for x, this is what I want to find. Now you've noticed I've got a 44.72 and the only other matching number is a 68.72. So I'm going to have to find out what does this here match with. Well, if you look, it's pretty straightforward. It matches with that number right there. And this one matches with that one right there. Now, I'm going to try to keep my x in the numerator. So it's going to be x over 72.11 equals 68.72 over 44.72. So here is my two pieces of information that I'm going to use. I've got fh which is and, and f prime h prime and I've got f g and I've got f prime g prime so taking a look at that I'm going to put my two numbers in 68.72 over its matching 47.2 sorry 44.72 and that is set equal to x over its matching 72.11 now I want you to solve the question and then we will correct it so pause the recording and solve this question Okay, I want to get the x by itself. I'm dividing by 72.11. So in order to get rid of the 72.11 being divided, I have to multiply both sides by 72.11. So 68.272 divided by 44.72 times 72.11 is equal to x over 72.11 times 72.11. Now remember, this is in the numerator, right? There's a fraction here. So those two there, the one in the numerator and the one in the denominator, they're going to cancel out, leaving you with just x. Now, to do this calculation on your calculator, you're going to go 68.72 divide 44.72 times 72.11. And you should get 110.8094633. And of course, we're going to round it off. It doesn't tell us what to round off here to, so we're going to take two decimal places as the default. So this becomes um, the zero here is changed because the one uh, beside it is five or greater. So this is greater, so that means that zero is going to become a one. So there's your answer right there. Okay, now I want you to take and do the next one. I want you to do y. Now, caution. Don't use a calculated number in a calculation when you have a matching set. All right? Don't use the 7211 and the 11081 here because this was 110. 0.81, right? Don't use this. This number here has been rounded off. Because it's rounded off, it's not as accurate as the numbers you've been given here and here. So continue to use FH and F prime H prime, and then I want you to find out what Y is. So pause the recording, and I'd like you to calculate the value of Y, please. All right. So again, I'm going to have a match here. So I want to have the y is going to match up with 80. So that's going to be y over 80. That's the g prime h prime over h g g h. And then the other one is going to be the two that I used already here, the, the 68.2, which matches up with the 44.72. So putting my numbers in, I get y over 80 is equal to 68.72 divided by 44.72. To get the y by itself, I've got to get rid of the 80. To get rid of the 80, you multiply by 80 because then the 80s will cancel out. So both sides have to be multiplied by 80 because whatever I do to the left side, I have to do to the right. So y over 80 times 80. Okay. Now remember, this is a fraction over 1. This is in the numerator and this is in the denominator, so they will cancel out. 80 divided by 80 is 1. Right. And over here, I still have 68.72 over 44.72 times 80. So divide first then multiply by 80, and you should get 122.9338104. Now, because it didn't tell us what to round off to, we default to two decimal places. So that means our cutoff is going to be right here, right there. And that 3 does not cause that to move, so your final answer is going to be 122.93. And don't forget, we're in millimeters, so make sure you include your units when you do that. Okay, if you have any trouble, go over uh, the video again. And if you need help, come and see me. I will see you in the next lesson.